Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Welcome to the final Road to Cheltenham review of the day for the 2021 Cheltenham Festival. And what a way to go out with a bang with the well child Cheltenham Gold Cup Ruby. What an addition of that race. It was a cracking race to watch uh, from start to finish. We had the pace we hoped we'd have. Fraud on, Black Op, Kenboy, they went at it. And they went that hard. If River never got a look in. But Manila Indo was right up there behind them all the way. Kenboy followed him. Aplutar followed Kembo or followed uh, Album Photo. It was just a brilliant, brilliant race to watch. Great race right in it too. Uh, Rachel Blackmore and Paul Town and came close together at the back of the fourth last. Rachel put Paul in the pocket before they turned in. And Jack Kennedy was just in the right place all the time. It was it was magical to watch. Was there a moment when you thought that Bryony Frost on Frodon was was controlling it? No, she never got left alone. I didn't think anyway. And I've only watched it once. I haven't watched the replay. Um, I, I didn't. I felt like it was fairly strong all the way. Um, and I think from halfway down the back, you were looking at the three horses. Manila Indo, Album Photo, Aplu Tar. And it just played out from there. And he was a good winner, the winner. I mean, I turned my back on him. I thought when he won in Wexford, he beat Milan Native. And then went to Navin and won. Like he was a real contender. Obviously fell into Savills. Ran in the Leopards, the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup. I had deserted him, but the talent was there. I was exactly the same as you, and obviously I'm I'm ruining now, ruining it now. There was a point where Jack Kennedy moved up outside Frodon and just cast a glance across to Bryony Frost, which made me think, okay, he thinks he's got Frodon covered, but the threats were behind. How potent do you think Album Photo was today? I thought he travelled really well. I was disappointed with how little he picked up. Um, I thought all the way Paul Town had looked happy on him but from the time they came down the hill he had a chance to get out and Paul Town went out but he couldn't hold he couldn't hold his position when he got out Red to Blackmore just easily pushed him back in so that mean, that tells you he wasn't able to go forward um, he should have been able to hold his position so I was a bit disappointed with the horse I think on the day but I, I must say I thought there was brilliant riding here all week from a lot of different people and I thought Jack was very good even when he got there he looked over at Brian he, he, he knew the dangers were behind him, mm. but he waited for the dangers. He didn't set sail and make himself a target. It, the tactical riding was, was, was super. I totally agree. I think Album Photo rubbed a few of the fences. He was a mm. bit more like his 2019 round than last year's round of jumping, I thought. Yeah, he did make a few mistakes. And I don't think that Plutar was good either. Uh, yeah. Not, not that's wrong. He was good. He didn't jump as well as the winner. You're, you're talking about the thing that you've mentioned about Al Plutard all the time, and it was noticeable even over three mile, two and a half furlongs. He's just slow away from his fences. Yeah, he doesn't land galloping. He lands a bit static, and uh, ultimately he came down to jumping. Now, having watched Manila Indo and Leperstown, I thought his jumping would be the weakest, but it turned out to be the strongest. Yeah, me too. I fell into that trap as well. But I thought that um, Jack Kennedy really had a Pluto on the stretch. Two out, he got a superb jump and he got the better jump at the last as well. And he did idle a little, little bit. We've seen that from Manila Indo before. But because he'd got that impetus and the, the jumps from the second, out, second last and the last, he was in a pole position. He was. And he was never going to get beaten, really, was he? Um, he, I, he was always just doing enough, really, in front. But... Look, he's a he's a he's a really good racehorse. I mean, he beat Alahorn and Albert Bartlett, um, and that Albert Bartlett is now incredibly strong form. It, it really is, and what a spare ride for Jack Kennedy to be picking up. Henry de Bromhead said that uh, when they were looking to see, you know, who would be riding Manila Indo at the time, he didn't think that that Jack would be available. Um, but the cards have fallen as such that he didn't end up with a Gold Cup ride, and he stepped into the winner. Yeah, a f- a fabulous and great for him. I mean, he must have looked at. Uh, Sir Gerhard winning and Quilixius winning and thinking they could have been his rights and uh, Rachel won on both of those and then he goes and wins on one of hers so um, and maybe Jamie Codd would have ridden Sir Gerhard what are we talking about um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a realistic world but uh, not a realistic world in a normal world um, but look that's the way the, the cookie crumbles and it was, I thought it was just a fabulous race to cap off a fabulous week <laughs> And it was great as well because Jack Kennedy and Rachel Blackmore have been advertising their talents in so many different ways this week. For the Gold Cup to be fought out by the two of them just seemed to be fitting. It did. Um, I thought both were at the top of their game all week. Uh, I thought Jack's right on Galvin, Rachel on numerous occasions, Jack on Mount Ida. Um, I thought they really advertised this, their skills. And I must say, I did admire Paul Townend's resilience. 
uh, to keep going throughout the week when the ball hadn't bounced from, got chinned in the Fox Hunters then yes. and still went out and pulled the mayor's chase out of the fire. Um, I do, I have always and always will admire people of that mental strength. Yeah, so he, he won that on, on Kulrivi, uh, battling it out with Ellie May. The two of them were going at it for some way out in the Mrs Paddy Power Mayor's chase. There were two decent mares. It was a good race, um, great race to watch. And uh, there were, uh, Kulrivi seemed to jump into Ellie May a few times mm-hmm. um, and eventually just outstayed her. Mm. Yeah, but she's plucky, isn't she? She she tried all the way to the line. It's a great first edition for the race. I mean, yeah. that is a strong first edition. I, I think it is. Like, and I know people say, oh, the mayor's hurdles have diluted this and the mayor's novice hurdles diluted that and the mayor's chase will dilute the other, including you. But look at the record mayors had here this week. Yeah. You look at them, and those races encourage uh, people to buy fillies at store sales and put them into training and grow Grow the, grow the sport and I'd look people might say it's dilution I, I think it's a step in the right direction I've said that earlier in the in our series that I'm torn in two ways I can I definitely see uh, how it encourages to put a mare actually in training not just have them racing as bumpers if at all but actually put them through hurdling and chasing we know more about both sides of the pedigree that's got to be a, an unalloyed positive um, and I think you're right with that how the mayors have done so well during the course of these four days we're seeing the dividends of that now I think oh we are Mrs Milner uh, Paul Hennessy's mayor to won the Coral Cup Heaven there help was us. Mayors, heaven help us. There was there was mayors everywhere. It was it was, I don't know. We just thought it was a great week racing, Lydia. <laughs> it's been great. Uh, we should. Um, you mentioned uh, Bill away um, second again in the in the in the Fox Hunters. Paul Town and narrowly losing out to Lorcan Williams. Paul Lock Bay, the winner for Will Biddick, and of course, in a non-COVID world, Will would have been riding him. Yeah, trainer ridden. Um, jumped better than Bill away, I think. Uh, Larkin Williams was very good sat at the top of the hill when he looked like getting pushed a bit wide and getting too handy he sat sat back in followed him all the way down the hill didn't commit too soon um, but I thought jump and I thought the winner jumped better than the runner up and we've been talking about upsides here I just want to talk about a few downsides Champ was awful in the Gold Cup wasn't he right from the first fence like went left and screwed the first and halfway to the second Nick Odebomba was hitting him a slap on the shoulder mm. Santini um made a terrible mistake as well but looked flat to the boards to me so they were two big disappointments in that um, for whatever reason I, I don't know and Santini looked with the blinkers on him in the parade or the visor sorry that he was sharp and yeah. definitely alive but didn't transpire no, and usually his jumping is an asset. So that was that was really yeah. weird from Santini. And while we're talking about negatives, Zana here in the Triumph Hurdle, I'll move on to the fabulous winner, Calixos, in a moment. But my, my, I felt uncomfortable about it the moment I saw that first time tongue tie slapped on. It just made me feel uncomfortable as a backer of Zana here. Same here. Uh, same here. There had to be a reason it was going on. And he kept at it well in the end, but mm-hmm. I thought the winner was very good. I thought Adagio ran with great credit. So did Hoton Kalur. Um, mm. But the Zan here tongue tie in the morning when he came through. Yeah, he he was he was very flat. But the winner, um, a, a race again that Rachel Blackmore controlled in a different kind of way, waiting, making sure that Jack Kennedy was 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 uh, stuck in a pocket as well. He probably wants to be there to a great degree because the horse was being a, a little bit keen. But she was controlling that on Quilixios. Yeah, and she waited till she got far enough down the hill into the home straight that she was sure she was going to get to the line and that's the way she rode her and mm-hmm. rode him even and when she set sail they were never going to catch her yeah and I, I asked her that she do, he's always been talked about as a stayer he looked as though he's got a fair bit of speed to me as well today yeah did they, did they, I don't know did they go that slow though they I, crawled I, 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 they crawled they crawled did they um, but if they're crawling then you're controlling it all the better <laughs> And I think um, uh, you're right to mention Adagio, a, a superb performance for, for David mm. Pipe. Um, and Horton Kalur, I mean, Willie's got a decent horse there. That's only his second start. Yeah, I know. But the only issue with Horton Kalur is he's only four and he's not going to be a novice next season. Mm. Um, you would lo- imagine tough. having him. Yeah. Imagine having him next November running the maiden hurdle. There you a big blowout Tritonic in the first, unfortunately. The, the story of the British week. Never really gone. Um, and then the, the county, and I thought it was great. Peter Fahey, Kevin Sexton, uh, Belfast Banter, who's been called plenty of names in his life, uh, dug in. I couldn't actually believe that. I saw him arrive and I said, 
he won't go by anyway. But he went <laughs> by and he got to the line. It's a beautiful ride from Kevin Sexton because he knew yeah. what he had with Belfast Banter and he knew how to ride the new course as well. He did, kept taking his time, uh, followed them all the way into the home straight, let the two off in front that were stepping on the gas plenty early and, and, and reeled them back in. We must tip our caps to Petit Mouchoir at the age of 10. He's been at the top level so much. And that was a huge run under Jordan Gainford. He's a name to notice this week in second in the county hurdle. Yeah, it was a good run from, from Petit Mouchoir. Uh, but he's, just, he's a very good horse. He's been to a couple of festivals now. Hasn't managed to win any of them, but um, he runs well here. He does, he does indeed. Um, I haven't mentioned the Albert Bartlett, have I? The, the grade no. one staying race. And we had a fabulously impressive winner in Vanillier. I know, when you look back to his form, he had beaten Statler and Nace only three runs ago. Went to Limerick then at Christmas and was second. Really disappointed on his next start. Uh, but he was always in control of that race. And that was, st- I thought, Stoney run early on. Yep. Uh, Richard Johnson got involved in Admiral then and himself and Mark Walsh controlled the race from there on. But I was impressed with how the winner went to the last and then just went away. Yeah. Galloped out through the line. Gavin Cromwell's horses are back in unbelievable form. Uh, two winners flooring Porter yesterday. Vanillier today, um, he must be delighted himself. And that adds to his champion hurdle. He only does grade one races. He comes over to Cheltenham. Yeah. He wins grade ones. He goes home. Who wants them handicaps? <laughs> well, quite a few people, I reckon. But nonetheless, that was a superb performance. He said Vanillier was sick uh, at the Dublin Mason Festival. Clearly, he was very well here. This is a very exciting future chaser for a horse of his relative inexperience, specifically for that race. It tends to bode well for a classy horse. Minella Rindo had slightly less experience. And look what he's done. Yeah, I know, but I, I think the pace of the race probably was a uh, help for horses with little experience. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and then, unexpectedly, in the final race, Willie Mannins still managed to end up being the top trainer of the week. I suspect he'd have swapped his uh, haul for Henry de Bromheads, wouldn't he? Uh, possibly, <laughs> possibly. Um, if you told him he was going to be leading trainer and that Shaq and Bourgeois wouldn't win, I'll... Um, Album photo wouldn't win, mm. and a few more of them. Yeah, I, I would have suspect he would um, swap it around. But uh, look, Galloping the Champ is a really nice horse. He did a good run in his first start in Gorn when C. Ducker beat him. Disappointed in Limerick, ran really well behind, appreciated at the Dublin Racing Festival. And Sean O'Keefe had him in a lovely position every step of the way. And again, Lydia, he waited all the way from the second last hurdle all the way up. It's just the confidence to wait and know where the winning post is. And he said to me he'd been taking advice from you about that. And I said back to him what you said to me last night, which is you can listen all you like. You do still have to go and do it. Yes, you're dead right. And that <laughs> is uh, a mark. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> whatever. But uh, no, he did. And um, it was fair play to him. And I think we should um, end by reflecting on the whole meeting that Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore had. Although Henry de Bromhead doesn't end up being champion trainer for the week, he nonetheless has become the first trainer to win the champion hurdle, the champion chase and the Gold Cup at one meeting. What It, it seems to me like it sounds ridiculous for somebody who's, who operates at Henry de Bromhead's level. It seems to me like a kind of watershed moment in terms of Henry, in terms of the depth and breadth of the talent in his yard. It is, but Lydia, I remember riding for his dad, Harry, and riding for Henry when he started. And um, he's come such a long way. And even when, the, when he had this, the Potts horses, then they left and he had to reboot himself and go again. He got some of the chickens down ones out of Willie Mullins. It's, it's amazing how things go round and round. He has good investors now and he's spending their money, money wisely. And I, to me, his best performance was Honeysuckle. I think how he has managed her whole career mm. to where she is now to achieve what she did here on Tuesday with a career best and performance hasn't overfaced her, has ran her where he thought she could win and she's kept improving. That's, that's a skill. It is. He's done the right thing at the right time. He was totally dazed after the Gold Cup, the one two in, in the Gold Cup. He just couldn't yeah. believe it. Could you imagine standing in Cheltenham any day of the week, but standing there watching your two horses? Paul Nichols has, so it's Henry Bromhead. Yeah, incredible. And uh, final word to uh, Rachel Blackmore. There's only one person who has twice ridden more winners in a week at the Cheltenham Festival, and I'm talking to him. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, I, she was incredible. And the only thing I do know is that picking the wrong one in the Gold Cup will take a good bit of the last of the week off, off the week for I understand that. I have had that feeling. And I know 
at all she's achieved, she's heading to Heathrow this evening with that in the back nagging in the back of her head. That's how competitive she is. But she was she was brilliant. I, I thought I thought a lot of the a lot of the jockeys were very good. Or she was exceptional. So was Jack. Um, I thought Paul just kept going and going, even when the ball wasn't bouncing for him. Um, you know, and and different people, Kevin Sexton. Richie, uh, Richie Condon, Sean O'Keefe. There's so many. I'm going to leave someone out. We start mentioning people. You leave people out. Yes, but, um, but I just, I, I said, I don't know. I, I, I said it when I was wrapping up on ITV, Lydia. I, I was a proud Irishman this week. Well, you couldn't fail to be, could you? I mean, it's utter domination. I think there's going to have to be some serious thinking for the British racing industry, isn't there? Yes, and... Um, that's a very long conversation and there'll be lots <laughs> I don't of theories. intend to have it now. <laughs> no, and there'll be lots of theories and notions and ideas and reasons. Um, but I would say the Irish programme works. I would say the prize rain Ireland is a huge help. Yeah. Um, I'd say the funding of Irish racing is a massive thing compared to the UK and all the spin-offs all the way back down then from breeders to the pin hookers to the people who buy stores to point the point to turn them into better horses. Uh, it's a business model that's working right now. You, Ireland has government help, doesn't it? And um, yeah, it do, it do, it does, and it's huge and it's key. And therefore, our program is completely different to years. It's not levy funded. Therefore, uh, we don't have to have all the handicaps. The difficulty is, you know, the mood that society is in towards horse racing, and obviously, you know, going into the Chel- Cheltenham Festival, you know, that hasn't been good. But we we do need to have that conversation about about our industry because it is such a fundamental part in terms of employment and in terms of the richness of our society. It is, and it, that's the vital thing in Ireland. I mean, for every euro the government gives Irish racing, it puts thirty back into the economy. Yeah, yeah. it's an investment. It's an industry. It's not a sport. Yeah. Uh, absolutely right um well that's us going all serious for, for a moment isn't it so uh, we should we should end on, on a lighter note and uh and thank you very much for for your contribution to the series uh oh, thank i hope you. you've enjoyed I, it I, I, I didn't do it on my own idiot there was two of us <laughs> in it so thank you very much um i did enjoy it and uh have we another one to do a special uh, we do have a special well remembered well trailed you know getting good at this uh, yeah there's a there's a, a road to Cheltenham cross out Aintree special coming up of which more details shortly we need to thank our our backup team as well we need to thank uh, Ben and Sarah and Bernard and Will and Ellie and Nick as well of course who've joined us for the special yes all of them it's um it's funny I, I didn't have to travel to the UK to do it, to do it this year but there was a lot of work involved in it, a lot more than people would realise. <laughs> it's certainly true, but it's such a, a pleasure to do it. So thank you very much. And thank and you. Thank you. Thanks, Ruby. And thanks, everyone, for, for watching throughout the series. We've really valued your feedback, your comments, the questions that you've sent us, and we look forward to doing it all again next season. Bye for now.